Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are taking a look back through some of the best tech of 2017, plus with your help we are picking out the ultimate in new bikes and kit. We also have Bradley Wiggins back in the velodrome, the most interesting cycling news. And because the first true wintry weather has hit most of Europe this last week, we're also taking a look at some snow bike antics. Some of my favourite kind of antics, those. Possibly in the top ten of all antics, snow biking. I might have top five. From France, welcome to the GCN Show. This week in the world of cycling, we have learned that Japan now definitely sits on the list as a cycling paradise after the East Japan Railway Company announced new cycling specific weekend trains which will carry 99 cyclists at a time. And their bikes. And their bikes, yeah, from Tokyo to the nearby cycling playground which is the Boso Peninsula. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? It does. And we also learned that 64% of you think that Chris Froome can do the Giro d'Italia Tour de France double. Now bearing in mind that we don't think he can, so therefore he's not got the curse of GCN on his shoulders, the odds are now probably stacked firmly in his favour. Um... Uh, we also learnt through some of your comments, amongst them Jose Pedro Marquez and Yanis Dont, that the quadruple is actually not unprecedented. Eddie Merckx has done it before. Yeah, we probably should have guessed yeah. that, Dan. Eddie Merckx has done everything. Uh, when I was a cyclist, I didn't need a compact. Now, the year is gently drawing to a close, and so we thought that this was the perfect opportunity to do our annual tech awards. What is the best tech in cycling of the year? You have been voting in your thousands to decide what the GCN viewers collectively think is the best new product of 2017, the best new bike, but first up, Pro Bike of the Year. That's right. Who has the nicest, the blingest, the sexiest bike in the Pro Peloton? Well, these are your nominations. Sagan Specialized, Van Avermaet's BMC, Emma Pooley's Bond, Nibali's Merida, Tony Martin's Canyon, Contador's Retirement Trek, and Pipo Pizzato's Willia. And so it's time for the results. In third place, it's Tony Martin's Canyon Craftwork Speed. This is a very special bike. That Kraftwerk themed paint job is amazing, but it's also the details that Tony Martin obsesses over. This is a bike that's all about speed. He's listened to the research to so many amazing prototype or one-off bits. I got very excited about that bike, yeah, Dan. Yeah, it is a nice bike. It is a nice bike. Right, in second place, it's Alberto Contador's retirement special Trek Imonda. Yeah, this is a very good looking bike, and like Tony Martin's, it's all about the finer details. Like the bar tape, which is wrapped from the top down to the bottom. Then there's that paint job with many of the races that he won in his career. And then a few little things like the stem cap, which says, attack till the end. And then Kera is poda, which means love is power. Oh, this is not dirty one. What did it actually mean, Dan? Where there's a will, there's a way. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, the winner of this category is Peter Sagan's Specialized Tarmac SL6. That is one stunning looking bike. Specialized released the all new Tarmac just in time for the Tour de France. And then Sagan obviously got a very, very special one. Aerodynamic, yep. Lightweight, yep. Unfortunately though, this one didn't actually reach the finish line of the Tour de France, but. No, we didn't see too much of it in no, there, did we? Story, no. Right, on to the next category, and there have been some amazing new products released over the last 12 months. It's actually been quite hard to whittle it down. Yeah, it and has. We managed it. It has. It? We did. Now, these are our list from which you got to vote. The first one, Shimano Ultegra DI2 Hydraulic Group Set. Now, according to Shimano, this is the closest that Ultegra has ever come to Dura Ace. And then there is the Power to Max NG Eco, a power meter which retails for less than 500 euros and yet shares many of the traits of its bigger Power to Max brother. Yeah, we've got the Wahoo Element Bolt GPS head unit on there. That was causing quite a stir when it was launched earlier in the year thanks to its ease of use, uh, its functionality and indeed its reliability. Don't forget it also saves you one and a half watts as well. I'd never forget that it saves you one and a half watts. Uh, there was also stars. the Mavic UST tubeless, which pretty much blew Simon's mind. <laughs> it did, actually. And then, controversially, we included the Focus Project Y e-bike, which, to be fair, looks like a normal road bike, which is why that particular bike gets on Innovation of the Year list. 
Straight on to the results then. In third place is the Power to Max NG Eco. In second, it's the Wahoo Element Bolt. And in first place, the winner is the Shimano Ultegra DI2 Hydraulic Group set. Well deserved, I think. Actually, I'm in agreement 100% with you guys. That was quite a remarkable uh, product launch, actually. Yeah. Uh, it works as well as Dura-Ace, but it's Ultegra. Yeah, and it doesn't even weigh much more than their flagship Dura-Ace DI2, does no, it? That's and it not looks to like. amazing. Right then, on to the best bike of 2017. You ready for this? To wait until later in the show. Oh, damn! Sorry. You tease. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We shall kick off Cycling Shorts this week with news that Bradley Wiggins was back competing at the London Velodrome. Although when we say that he rode, don't get confused, what we actually mean is he rode. Yeah, thanks for clearing that one up, Dan. Uh, no, his retirement from cycling does continue, but this was actually his new sport indoor rowing and he was there competing in his first ever race which was the British Indoor Rowing Championships. At the London Velodrome. Indeed it was. He actually, pretty solid effort, finished 21st and that was despite a very dodgy start where he actually stopped rowing for yeah. a bit. What do you think that equivalent of that is in our cycling world? Is it maybe failing to clip in <laughs> at the start of a cyclocross race or falling off the start ramp of a TT? Definitely falling off the star yeah. ramp of a TT. Uh, now, I actually, judging by the look of him, Dan, wonder whether, in fact, next on his list of sports to try is going to be playing tennis in the 1970s. <laughs> should we get back to the cycling side? Yeah, we probably should. Yeah, we should, because there's been some amazing news for fans of the classics over the last week. Uh, because after being left out in the cold for a few years, the Muir van Gaardsbergen is not only back in the route of the Tour of Flanders, but... Where it proved pivotal in this year's race, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, even though it was a long way from the finish. It did indeed. Uh, but the big news last week was that the classic and iconic Muir and Bosberg combo will now feature as the finale of both the men's and women's on loop het newsblad in February of next year. And I am really looking forward to that. I am really looking forward to that as well. That is like the classics opener, isn't it? Amazing. Uh, right now, Strava have just released their end of year stats. And as always, they make some really interesting reading. Like, for example, the fact that the 21st of May was the most popular day of the year to go for a bike ride on. Uh, although neither of us actually no. went for bike rides, did we? No, I was at a bike race, didn't ride. No, I think Matt and I were actually in Alta Madeira, which means that we did ride, but we just didn't actually upload that day. We were right. doing top secret GCN Didn't filming. happen then, did it? Yeah, right, fair enough. Uh, but, uh, mind-blowing, this one, 7.3 billion kilometres were uploaded to Strava of cycling. Yeah. That's nuts. That's, That's a long way, isn't it? That is. And we've been doing some mathematics before the start of the show. Uh, we reckon that equates to roughly 219 billion calories burned. Incredible. Uh, so I guess it's no surprise, really, that Strava have also revealed the most popular cycling snacks and drinks which they've worked out through the number of mentions that they've had over the last year. Yeah. Should we crunch through the data then? Crunch. Oh, you know. Yeah, go on. You got it? Yeah. You, just, you didn't laugh? No, go on. Okay, right. Anyway, so they split it up into UK and US, where there is the, the bulk of the data. Interestingly, in the UK, coffee, most uh, popular uh, post or during ride beverage. But actually, weirdly, 3,000 people, Dan, didn't have cake with their coffee. Ooh. So I'm not sure what's going on with those people. I thought it was compulsory, uh, but anyway, there we go. And then 30,000 of your bike rides were on here, mate, because uh, beer is in third place. Yeah. Uh, 3,581 uh, people uh, also joined down in having beers post-ride, presumably. <laughs> uh, and then further down the list, burgers, 3,254 mentions, wow. which, uh, yeah, that's weird. Interesting anyway. stuff. I think we should compare it, though, to the stats over in the US, which Got is him. where I shall be moving shortly, because look at this. Beer, right <laughs> at the top of the pile, of at least three times more mentions than any other food or drink. Yeah, fair enough. That is incredible, isn't it? Second place, their coffee. They've also got burgers and pizza. Also making an entry are donuts. Yeah, and cookies, I noticed. Yeah, that Tucked cookies is solely down to Phil Guyman mentioning <laughs> on his Strava rise. He hasn't broken the UK market with cookies yet. No, prolific on Strava and also prolific uh, with cookies, <laughs> isn't he? Uh, right, now moving on, because a lot of you were pleased, and I'm glad you were pleased, that in the first ever matchup between GCN and GTN, that uh, the cycling came out on top. Yeah. 
Four oh one and two. Well done. Oh no. Yeah, well I was relieved, but you only yeah. just won. No, I know it was blooming close. Some of you actually seem to think that we rigged that race, uh, but we didn't. Um, just want to remind you that it was actually a proper organised race that we were taking part in. It was just brilliant coincidence that we were actually so closely matched uh, and quite stressful. Uh, never have I sprinted so fast down a bumpy grassy field. Uh, but anyway, this is linked to something because some research uh, came out this week from the Chinese University of Hong Kong that showed that sprint training on a bike can improve your running performance. It did. Not your fell running, unfortunately, so. No, no. Uh, but what they found was that doing eight by 30 second intervals on your bike increases your VO2 max, which got me thinking, imagine how bad you would be at running if you didn't ride your bike. Right, now, quite excited by this. I think we've got ourselves a P-band. Have we? Positive bicycle advocacy notice of the week. In Melbourne, members of the Bicycle Network, no relation to us, created their own segregated bike lane on a particularly contentious stretch of road in order to basically highlight the need for a permanent one. Hmm. Effective protest, maybe, but it didn't go down very well with the local authorities, did it? <laughs> and actually, probably not that much different to the man we mentioned last week from China who was fined for painting his own road markings. <laughs> All right, true. You can't argue with this one, though, because Ontario, Canada have just announced a $93 million windfall to help get people on bikes. Basically just increase cycling provisions there. 120 communities potentially set to benefit from this. Wow, that is what I call a P-Ban. Oh yeah. Is Ontario anywhere near Ottawa? A quick update now on the GCN World Bicycle Relief fundraising efforts. The money raised now equates to 857 bikes, which is unbelievable. Thank you so much yeah. for everything that you have donated. Absolutely amazing. We set our goal a little low, probably, Si, at 300, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, we've surpassed that by a long way. What that means is that Matt and Si will definitely be doing their ride across London. But as we close in on 900 bikes, it seems only right we should now aim for the big round number that is 1,000. And I think that with a little push before New Year, we can get there. Yeah, and don't forget as well that every time you donate, uh, that amount is doubled by World Bicycle Relief. So actually, if we get to 1,000 bikes, then that will end up being 2,000. So please consider donating now. Uh, if you click on the link on screen, that will take you right through to the page that you need. Yes, and we were actually reminded very recently by this post on Instagram by Kenyan riders of just how desperate people are for two-wheeled transport over there. This has got to be the ultimate hack. Hack of the week right there. Before we get properly into racing news, we thought we would start by taking a look at how some of the world's best cyclists coped with the pretty arctic conditions that hit Northern Europe last weekend. Yeah, so let's start off with Olympic champion Anna van der Breggen. Uh, she chose probably the most sensible option for the conditions and went skiing. Yeah, nice. Uh, Mark Beaumont, meanwhile, uh, chose to go for a run, although I'm pleased to hear it was just around the loch as opposed to around the world. Yeah, we can't see exactly where he's running, to be honest, can we? No, Maybe we somewhere down it. under. Uh, Gianluca Brambilla, he hit the gym. We don't know exactly what he's doing here, but what we do know is that we couldn't do it. Yeah, pretty confident of that. Marcel Seberg was persuaded to go out on his mountain bike. Martin Kaiser went and did a half marathon. Show off. Uh, Jasper de Boist went on Zwift. Whilst Thomas de Gen didn't do any exercise, uh, he stayed at home and created a family of snow people. Expect a big early season from de Gen. Yeah. Actually, no, to be fair to him, I was going to leave it there. Uh, but actually, having a look, that's quite an impressive Not achievement bad, in that family. It? Yeah, some snow architecture going on right Presumably there. Presumably he is the one on his own in a breakaway. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, there were a couple of hard nuts that braved the weather on their road bikes, both of whom were actually former world champions. Coincidence? We think not. Here is Mariana Voss, and here is Michal Kwiatkowski. Michal Kwiatkowski. Michal Kwiatkowski. To be fair, Si, the hardest of hardcore cyclists had decided to race cyclocross. Yeah, we did. Unfortunately, my race actually got cancelled mm. due to bad weather, but, uh, you know, the thought was there. Yeah, we should put some violin sounds over the top of that for you, Si. Uh, the big news, though, over the weekend was the very welcome return of Pauline Ferron Prevost to top-level cyclocross yeah. competition, and she already has a win to her name. Uh, so on Sunday, she soloed to victory at the Dreven Cross in some very tricky conditions, ahead of world champion Sana Khan, who herself had won the previous day in Essen. Well, yeah, but in a race that Ferron Prevost finished fourth, despite starting on the back row of the grid. Now, it 
possibly is due to the fact that she'd been out training with Matt yeah. just the week before. Matt had been giving her a few tips whilst out with Ferran Bravo and also the rest of the Canyon SRAM team. Have a look at this. Cyclocross tips, Matt. <laughs> Pauline Ferrand Polo practicing her cyclocross skills in the bunch and overtaking half the half the field in the process. <laughs> That's a sign of a world champion. Uh, hold on a sec. Who who did he actually say there? Pauline Ferrand Polo. No, no, I still haven't got it. Pauline Ferrand Polo. I, th I think he is saying Pauline Ferrand Polo, but I can't decide whether that's his French accent. Uh, or he's just a bit cold. I think he is probably very cold. Yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, no, Si, uh, I think that the women's battle in cyclocross is really heating up into oh, somewhat of an yeah. epic for this season. Uh, Marianne Voss has also stated that one of her big aims is the World Championships. Pauline Ferrand Bravo is back to her best, or maybe even better. And then we've got Sana Khan, current world champion, who's been winning all season. Yeah, it's going to be amazing, isn't it? I can't wait. On the men's side, well, it's kind of business as usual, isn't it, really, uh, with Matthew van der Poel. Yeah, he's been out doing donuts on a motorbike. I wouldn't say that's quite business as usual, but, you know, actually, no, it kind of is with him, isn't it? Uh, anyway, winning was also very much on the agenda this weekend. Uh, he basically stormed off from the first lap at the Driven Cross and took that victory, and that was on top of victory in Essen the day before. Yeah. Unstoppable machine at the moment, isn't he? Uh, those conditions were pretty epic as cyclocross courses go, but if we head a little further south into Switzerland for the EKZ Cross Tour, that looked amazing too. Did you see Didn't that? It just, yeah. uh, Eva Lechner won the women's event there, whilst Marcel Meissen won the men's. Yeah, and we also can't leave racing news without a quick nod to the UCI Track World Cup in Santiago in Chile. This from Greg Henderson made us chuckle, didn't it? UCI clearly leaving uh, track maintenance to the very last minute. Now that's what I call a broom wagon. But I'm tss. Cheers, mate. Right then, enough of Dan making his weight. Let's head back to our Tech of the Year Awards, which was the best bike in 2017. We had aero bikes, we had lightweight bikes, we had classic road bikes, we had integration, we had forward thinking design, and we had aero discs. Now you've got to say, haven't you, out of that list, it is literally impossible to pick a best bike. They're all absolutely amazing, almost faultless in fact, and so actually it just comes down to what you want from a bike. Yeah, so we find out what they did want. Yes. It was super close actually at the top, so in third place, the specialised tarmac. In second place, it's the one by equipped 3T Strada. And that means that the winner in 2017 is the Pinarello Dogma F10. That is a lovely looking bike, isn't it? Hmm. What do you think? Well, there's no doubt it's been very successful. Yeah. Winner at Milan San Remo, two Grand Tours, loads of other races, and now a GCN award. It's been a hell of a year. That is quite a year, isn't it? I must confess, though, I personally wouldn't have voted for that, actually. Big fan of the Orbea Orca Aero. Big fan of the Cervelo R5, particularly the philosophy behind that bike. But actually, the one I would most like to try is the 3T I knew Strada. It. Yeah, I'm a big fan of one bike. Uh, I'm a big fan of aero bikes, fan of bigger tyres, fan of disc brakes, and actually a big fan of Gerard Ruman as yeah. well. And yeah, he designed it. Certainly the one that is most intriguing, isn't it? It is, yeah, very different bike. Right, let's move on to our final category then. Yeah, okay, so we asked a cheeky little extra question from you guys. What would be the innovation that we'd most like to see in 2018? Now in third place, rather coincidentally, and I did like this, 12% of you voted that you would like to see 12-speed cassettes. Yes. Well, how's that on road bikes, of course. In second bikes. place, 24% uh, of you voted to see a reduction in the minimum weight by the UCI for bikes. Yeah, we discounted all those multiple votes from Chris Froome. He, of course, wants to see that. Yeah. And then, in first place, with the majority of the vote, just 51% of you said that you would like to see cheaper electronic group sets. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, isn't it, to see whether we get a SRAM Force level ETAP group set. Well, they have been fairly quiet, haven't they, over the last 12 months? They're presumably working hard on something. Remains to be seen what. Oh, yeah. And will we see a Shimano 105 Di2 group set next year. Change the subject slightly. All this talk of new tech is all well and good, but there is a note of caution that we need to add. What's that? So there was some research published recently uh, in the Journal of Personal Relations. You want your favourites? 
Never heard of it. No? Okay. No, I know, actually. Uh, anyway, so this study was published by uh, some scientists at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, and they concluded, scientifically proved, in fact, that there is no such thing as love at first sight. This has absolutely nothing to do with cycling. Well, not, not directly, but hear me out, okay? So they proved that what we think as love at first sight is actually a strong physical attraction, which is entirely separate from what we know as love. And actually, it's only with hindsight that we then can go back and say, oh, that was love at first sight. When in actual fact, it was a strong physical attraction after all. So what you're trying to say is that although you might fancy a new bike, you might not then necessarily ever love it as much as the one that you're currently riding. Yeah, exactly. It is time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. Uh, starting things off for us this week is Manuel Corona over on Facebook. Uh, he sends in this picture of a stone wedging a front mech onto the middle ring. It's a good hack that, a yeah. very good get yourself home hack. Although, uh, choice, I would always go for a, a stick yeah. over a stone. S scratches are possible. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, next up we've got this from Scott Reed uh, on Facebook. He said he found a bodged seat post, but they've been colour matched. Yeah. Yeah, they've actually bothered to spray paint it. Uh, well, fair play. Yeah. It's still a bodge, but bike you know, still going. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, Albert Yan, he has sent over this, which I'm deeming a hack. So he's I made himself. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, here we go. He's made himself a tool bag out of an old inner tube. He's not just bodged it together with tape and wrapped the tools up. He's actually got a zip in there, and that looks very neat indeed. Well, fair play putting a zip on an inner tube. Imagine if you got a fat bike, you could uh, probably make a kit bag out of one of those. Yeah. True. Yeah, there you go, there's a business idea. Fat bike, kit bag in the tubes. Uh, right then, uh, this next one I think is great. Sent in uh, by Bon Lira Tompong on Facebook. Uh, it is a set of rollers uh, for his kid. GCN style. That. Yeah, that's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, hack. Well done. Uh, we love this next one, don't we? Oh, yes. Uh, this is from M underscore Emden. Uh, I made myself a cargo bike attachment and easy to switch between a cargo bike and a regular bike. And that there is amazing. That is really pretty cool, actually. That's another one that's got business idea written all over it. Yeah, well Making done. your normal bike into a cargo bike. I could have an aero cargo bike. There's a thought there. Yeah. Yeah. Go away and design it then. Oh, no, no, I can't. I'm just going to have to ask that chat. Uh, right, anyway, this next one uh, from DC Beachy, uh, which is a very cool uh, remote control holder uh, for his Apple TV uh, for when he's riding on Zwift, uh, but neatly done to attach to a zip speed mount. Very cool. That does look good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, right, that's it for this week, but next week we are after your Christmas themed bicycle hacks and bodges. Uh, use the ha same hashtag, GCN hack, and do your best. We have a very special giveaway for you this week. Smart trainers are the thing at the moment and the Elite Drivo is definitely one of our favourites. Not least because it has an inbuilt, super accurate power meter. But this side is something very special. You let me deal with this one. It's a bit heavy. Check it. I'm glad you're making it look easy. I wasn't yep. sure I could. Elite have produced this one-off, very special red driver. That's right, this could be perfect for GCN, but actually we are giving it away to one of you lucky viewers. Yeah, so if you want to put yourself in with a chance, all you've got to do to enter is click on the link in the description below. I'm loving this, mate. Literally the only one in the world that is red. Yeah, that is very cool. That is a mega prize. It's time now for Caption of the Week. Now part of the show where we show you a photograph that you caption it and we pick a winner. The winner getting one of these, a GCN Camelback water bottle. Last week's photo was this from the Giro d'Italia presentation. We have a winner and that winner is Josh Magnum. Uh, he put that awkward moment when you accidentally answer your phone while on the toilet. And it does kind of look like that, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, it looks just like that. Ciao everyone. Yeah. Genius. Well done, Love Josh. It. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we shall send that out to you. Uh, this week, the photo is actually of Cy. Well, you you think it's of me. We don't know. No, that is unmistakably you. You look yeah. better, actually, covered up. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cy's going to get you started. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, really quite cold and dangerous out walking the dog at the weekend. Yeah, very good, Cy. Uh, I think some of our viewers could do better. And yeah. feel free to let loose this week uh, right, on, well, the right, right. on the caption photo. Yeah. All right, go for it. Yeah. 
Put your caption in the comment section down below and we will pick a winner next week. Shortly, we shall tell you what is coming up on GCN over the next seven days. But first, uh, a couple of pretty funny comments from last week's shows. Firstly, underneath last week's show, in fact, uh, two people, Terry Dawson and Rebecca Jane, uh, were both quite irate that the tools behind John for Tech of the Week were not in the correct order. He needs to sort that out, doesn't he? Well, there's a reason why he's not here in this week's show. Yeah, banned. Exactly. Is he banned? That's a bit mean. I just thought he was upstairs <laughs> sorting the tools out. Uh, right, and then... Couple of great comments underneath uh, Dan's video about what uh, cyclists can teach triathletes. All uh, around, what they can teach us. Oh, what triathletes can teach cyclists. Was there anything? No, there was. Uh, it was a good video. Niels Heldens uh, said it reminds me of a couple of a commercial about toothpicks. Yeah, uh, that was when I revealed my shoulders. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it reminded me of toothpicks as well. Uh, and Michael McDermott, never wanted to disappoint his one in the comments, said this video was like coming home to find your dad dressed in your mum's clothes. Very good, Michael, very good. <laughs> On Thursday, we've got our top five pro cycling converts, i.e. people that come from other sports. Not Bradley Wiggins at the moment, going the other way. Uh, then on Friday, we kept you waiting a week, but this time it's up. YouTube have invested in extra service to handle the views and the comments. We're gonna look into whether a vegan can be a pro cyclist. That's right, Saturday's pro bike is brilliant. It's the DeLorean. Gotta be one of the ultimate hacks of the year. Dan gets a close look at that. On Sunday, we've got a first look at the Every Sight glasses, which are straight out of the future as well. And then on Monday, John brings us another maintenance video. And Tuesday? From the Ice Weasels Cometh in Rhode Island, the United States. Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN Show. It's a double header for this week's Extreme Corner. And first up is this from Kai Grocott. He is on an old bear road bike in a skate park. Woo! Whoa! Impressive. That like is that. quite like impressive. That. It's a shame he bumped into the end there. You know, I mean, he held it. Still look quite cool, yeah. but you know, not quite we, as clean. We couldn't as... do it, Sai. No, we don't couldn't. criticize. No. All right, and then next up, we've got Fernando Gaviria showing what you should really do when the weather hits Northern Europe, and that's go ride your mountain bike in Colombia. That lad's got some skills, hasn't he? He has, hasn't he? It's quite annoying. Young lad, going to win every race. He's, on yeah, the planet. he's so and similar to Sagan. So similar to Sagan, I think. All yeah. uh, right, well, that is the similar end. Similar wheelies to you as well, mate. Yeah, well, that, I didn't want to say, sorry. Uh, that is the end of this week's GCN show. If you've enjoyed it, please give us the thumbs up down below. Uh, and if you would like to subscribe, if you haven't done so already, you can click on the globe. Yeah, and if you want to watch a couple more videos now, then why not check out that runners versus cyclists video that we talked about earlier on. That one is just down there, and don't worry, because we come out on top. Yes. yes. Uh, also, if you missed Matt and John's look at some weird and wonderful retro tech, that is just down here.